This week is partly a conversation, but partly also an opportunity for you to navigate. We draw on hope when we are uncertain, and all of us in the work that we do at some point are uncertain. We're here in Glencree Peace and Reconciliation Centre. Glencree is a centre for peace and reconciliation in the island of Ireland and has had that role since the early 1970s. It's a place where people with oppositional views come together into dialogue. And it seemed like an extraordinary opportunity to talk about hope in this environment and to learn from those people that have helped hold those spaces for dialogue through the troubles to the current day. So we've brought together fellows from all across the world, diverse perspectives, experiences and understandings of where hope comes from. Also experiences of trauma and of inequities in their own context. It's a wonderful pleasure to host you all here on what's a rather cold day. I think the conversations have come at a really timely point we've all been through a global pandemic and we need that sense of hope. I think coming to mind is that Seamus Heaney hope. It's not that, um, hope is not the optimism that things will all work out but it's the steps that we all need to take and this has been a really great opportunity to begin to galvanise ourselves and take those actions and tangible steps together and to learn and have those experiences of how um, there is hope out there. We wanted to ensure that the event was held in a place where fellows could find resonance and Ireland was the place for that conversation to occur. It is the right place, it matters, it is a place where hope has been sustained as an island that has been through conflict over many generations and we've seen that play out over the past week. Hope can come from very difficult places, from very lonely places, and often comes from despair. Um, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, you can work on that, but hope can come from difficult places. So that's something that I've learned from the conversations from many of the fellows that we've talked to, uh, people who are coming from very difficult situations, circumstances, experiences, uh, political situations, uh, conflict zones, areas that are very, very difficult to deal with. So, there can be a lot of despair, a lot of fear in those areas, but from that despair, that, that difficult place, hope can grow. South Africa went through a very uh, traumatic um, time uh, during apartheid. A lot of um, people lost their lives, um, and, 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 and that trauma is still ongoing. Um, and I, I felt that um, the trauma that the Irish people suffered, particularly in, in Northern Ireland, is very similar to our own experience in South Africa. Um, and the fact that they, they, it is still ongoing, it is very much part of society. Um, however, I've been impressed by the initiative um, that I, I, I heard about in, at, at Glen Cree um, to, to really just have a space that you can go to to pour out all of these emotions that, you know, we, we, we are really being weighed down by on a day-to-day basis. If you don't have hope, then like, I guess like what's the whole point of all of this? And being able to engage in conversations about hope um, will help us kind of see through the difficult, the different challenges that we encounter in whatever aspect um, in, in whatever field we're, we're working on. And, and that's the only way we can build, I guess, societies that believe that there is something to be hopeful for. So this is the first time I, I'm attending anything kind of as a person with difficulty of hearing. So I, this whole interaction with the interpreters and experiencing a, a conference, a convening, in this way, um, kind of absorbing information, not just through the verbal language, but through visual language. That is one of the, like my main takeaways from this uh, convening. And that for me, like links to the different forms of healing and art outside the, the verbal language. I think this week has been quite a challenge for me. A challenge 
as to what hope looks like in different contexts and different hubs around the world and people's experiences in terms of what their challenges are. So for me, hope is really about what I can offer. I think I get hope from the people around me. Like-minded, like-hearted people, being on the same, same wavelength, I think that's important for me. And the convening, this thematic convening, is about hope and I think it's vital to maintain those relationships, vital for trust, regardless as to what level that might take. I think that hope, for me, the way it works is that we act and that generates hope and we act and that generates hope. And so to be collectively with a group of activists, each of our actions makes more and more hope. And when you're outside of the Atlanta community, sometimes it can feel like it's going to be impossible to make change, but we kind of activate each other. So that was a gorgeous thing. Conversation isn't always in words. Conversation is sometimes in body language. It's sometimes in the clothes you wear, the symbols that you use, the signs that you display. And what we've tried to do by introducing arts and creativity throughout the week, throughout the program, is tune people who that wouldn't be any part of their experience or their education into the roles that symbols and, and visual can play. But also, it's sometimes easier to talk about the film. It's easier to talk about the book. It's easier to talk about the thing that you see in the exhibition than it is to talk about yourself. I really appreciated the, the creative aspects, the, the art, the music, the, the poetry. I opened the book. That, that you gave and I just really like randomly flipped and it opened to the page with a poem of Emily Dickinson, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. And I thought of um, the sign language, the Irish sign language for the word hope, which is um, hope. Having been here this week, I've learned in so many ways that um, hope means much more than what I had um, envisaged. I've always seen it as, as something to do with, 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 with my vision for the future and, and, and you know, what I could possibly achieve. Uh, not very much about the issues of, I think, linked to survival. It's just envisioning a different future um, to your past that is, has been so traumatic. What you'll see three to six months from now is probably some new collaborations. I wouldn't be surprised if different people wrote Connect Grants or even IDA Grants because of some connection that they had here. And for me, I'll be able to go home and learn the grace of the Irish, the Irish people. and being Aboriginal, taking my humble culture and being able to roll up my sleeves and be able to challenge the system to make change for social equity to occur.